Capri and I are at Icebox Canyon and I've tried to desensitize her to these shoes. These are the little shoes for dogs to wear when they go out hiking, going out into the wild and whatnot. So I'm going to try to see how she does putting these on when we're out in the field. You know, she did quite well when we did it at home. It was a bit awkward, but I think she, uh, she got the hang of it, which is nice. So we're gonna put this on her and see how she feels about it. <laughs> She's gonna hate me so much. <laughs> So I'm turning this otherwise negative experience into a more positive experience. Yes, for the dog. Yes. All right, I'm gonna try the other leg. of making this easy. I have the shoes on her and I can distract her with her food, but as soon as she gets up, she's going to start feeling the awkwardness of the shoe. So to counteract that, I have to give her an even bigger reward. So I have to find something that she loves even more than the food, enough to distract her from feeling the awkwardness of the shoe. So as you can see, I'm turning this otherwise negative experience into a positive playtime experience. Go. Yes, okay. Good. Here. All right, so here we go. Capri and I are at Icebox Canyon. Capri's got dog shoes on. This is our very first time using, wearing dog shoes out in public. So, I'm gonna share with you guys the experience of it from her point of view. Let's see if it's Capri, no pulling. And see if this is a, a worthy uh, idea altogether. Um, all right, hold on one second. Wait, hey, wait. A lot of excitement over here. All right. So she's not too bothered by them. I think it's one of those things that, as the dog wears it more often and they become desensitized to it, just like anything. Here we are, Icebox Canyon. Come with me, let's go! Capri's doing a bit of pulling. She's excited. But just because we're in nature doesn't mean all of the rules go out the window. Dogs still gotta be obedient. So, shh, when she pulls, I'll stop, and then we keep moving. She's slowing down a bit. I don't have the luxury of doing figure eights right now. So, the best I can do in this situation is just to halt. And when she, and then we keep going. So stop and go, stop and go. No pulling. So she's catching on when I say no pulling, she slows down. Slow down. Listens. Goes to a wait for me to grab the, hey! Goes to a wait for me to grab the leash. Wait, after I grab the leash, I say okay. Capri and I are 
at Makers and Finders, which is a restaurant in Las Vegas, and she has found interest in licking the table. And when she does, I go tap on the table and say no. And of course, there are a lot of external stimuli here, but immediately tapping on no tells the dog that that object is not to be played with. Go to see if she tries to do it again. I think she's more interested in just looking outside. But you can see that sends a clear message to the dog that that object is not for them to play with. I'm going to get... There you go. Pick that up touch someone's dirty mask probably should wash my hands and when there's someone coming I try to divert her attention here All right, thank you thanks good so that's a way to desensitize your dog to people when you're out in public places anytime there's some activity someone coming around just get their attention and immediately reward them and so they start to feel like that's a normal situation and you have to get them right before the distraction reaches its peak and so you will always notice a loading period and right now I need her to settle and she's not quite settled because obviously there's a lot of stuff going on so when she's, so she's sniffing on the table I'll tap on it now so it's an immediately jarring sensation and it tells the dog no that's not for you I think the leash is... Alright, I'm gonna fix the leash again. So now that she's starting to calm down, I'm going to start giving her more freedom. And the freedom is the reward. Freedom is the reward for the dog being calm. You never want to give your dog free access to everything. You want to make sure that your dog is in a calm state, and so you only reward them for calm behavior. So I'm not going to pet her right now and I'm not going to touch her. I'm not going to tell her anything. I'm just going to wait until she's calmed down. This is a natural thing that a dog will do because especially when they're a puppy, they're quite curious. And so a curious puppy still needs to adventure a bit. They still need to experiment with different scents and smell different things. But eventually they will calm down. And so when you reach the moment where the dog's just in a calm and generally kind of cool and calm state, then you want to start rewarding the dog with affection, with treats. And so she just needs time to get used to all of the stimuli in the environment. And so you have to be patient with the dog. So I'm going to distract her. So now she's too concerned with me distracting her to be focused on people. I'm going to get her to calm down. Down. And when she's calm, Good girl. Give her a reward. There are times when I want her to pull and there are times when I don't want her to pull. And it's getting hard for her to make that distinction. Because when I have her on a skateboard, when I'm on a skateboard, I tell her to pull. But then when we're going for a walk, I make sure she doesn't pull. My goal is that as we keep doing that, she's going to understand the difference between one and the other. I need her to exercise some caution, especially when I let her off the leash like this. I don't want her to run too far, so I'll give, her, I'll give her the weight command, which is just the sound. Here, here, here. I see another, hey, wait. I see another dog coming, so I'm gonna stop for a sec. Hello. Hey, how are you? Yeah, thank you. Here. There's another dog coming, so I'm gonna go in the opposite direction because she's trying to bark. We're gonna go over here. Hey, 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 hey. No. Hello. Hi. Leave it. <laughs> no. No.
good. Let's see, it's so much harder to control her in the wild, and she's not showing as much restraint as she would if we were out at a dog park, for example. But that's why you have to desensitize dogs to all situations, and you have to take them everywhere, and you have to make sure they have all of the experiences so that they know that the rules apply everywhere you go, not just in certain places. I don't know where she is, but because we've had a recall in the house, I can give her a call and see if she comes. Capri! May have lost her. Capri, over here! Now this is where that recall training comes in handy. See? Good! And even though she took too long to get to me, it makes no sense for me to punish her for it. So never punish your dog when they do come to you, just because they took too long, or just because they didn't come to you as quickly or as immediately as you would have liked. And that's one way to get them to always want to run back to you. So right now she's going again. And I'm gonna, gonna stop here. Just to make sure that there are no other dogs on the way. So the good thing is weight. The good thing is our weight command is really good. And so is our uh, recall command. Hello. No problem. So I try to give the same rules inside and outside just to make sure that the dog understands. But these are not optional rules that apply in certain situations. These are rules that apply in all of situations. Whenever I see someone, I stop to the side. That way the dog gets used to stopping as well. Or just anticipating that I'm going to stop. And then that becomes more or less a natural instinct for the dog. All right, let's keep going. Capri is she's trained on some level not to go too far because I tend to give her a recall when she goes too far so she's already just caught on that when she gets to a certain distance she'll either stop and wait or stop and turn back around let her go off for a while and then I'm gonna stop right here and notice she's gonna realize that I'm not going to She's gonna come right back.
get it, Catherine? You think you lost me? Let's go. Thirsty? Come on. She probably needs a bigger bowl. I got this one when she was a puppy. I think she's outgrown it now. You guys scared? Yeah, I scared her. <laughs> Did you think it was a wolf? I did. It was a wolf. It's no wolf. It's just Capri. Oh, it's Shepherd. Yeah. So pretty. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so this is why I need to teach her to pick stuff up. I could have sent her to just pick that up for me, but we haven't practiced that yet, so. I like to take my time with commands and with tricks and learning behaviors. I don't like rushing through them. I want the dog to understand what I'm teaching them before I graduate to other tricks. Commands. I know you're eager, Capri, but Daddy's tired. All right, let's do this one. How are you gonna do this one? Let's see. Let's go. Figure it out. I bet if I went before her, she would figure it out. There's another way right there. I want to see how truly smart these dogs are. Either she's gonna figure out figure out how to get through from here, or she's going to go try to find another way. All right, I'm gonna go this way. Wait. It's hard to do with one hand. Break, find me. Go around. Go around. See if she's gonna learn. She's gonna try to figure out another way. Nope, she's trying to go out this way. It's quite dangerous. Capri, go around. Uh-oh, freaking out. Go around. Juice box knows this, but Capri doesn't. Go around, let's go. I'm gonna teach her the go around command by just simply going around this way. Capri, go around. There we go. Good. So I do that every single time. We're in a jam, just to teach her that there is another way to get to where we're going. And so instead of freaking out, she should jump into action and try to figure out what other way there is to get to me. Yeah, okay, I'm done. crazy. <laughs> just trying on those shoes for the first time. <sighs> Go around. Good. Hello. Capri. Yeah, I'm tired and I like to get tired of the book. Here. 
All right, all good. Yeah. Made it to the end. There's Capri over there. It's the end of the hike. And that's the grossest pool of stagnant water you've ever seen. Alright, let's see if we can make it down. Ha, ha, ha. 